the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents Dick Powell with Ona Munson in The Sailor Takes a Wife. But first, Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. One of DuPont's better things for better living is Speed Easy. Speed Easy wall paint makes redecorating an easy job. When you decide at the last minute to fix up a room for that special furlough visitor in your family, try DuPont Speed Easy. Choose from eight beautiful colors. Thin with water, apply one quick coat over wallpaper or plaster. And you can count on Speed Easy to dry in one hour. And now our cavalcade story, The Sailor Takes a Wife. Tonight, the Cavalcade of America takes you to a fighting front that most Americans haven't heard so much about. Our story is a story of ships, of printer's ink and ships, and a boy and a girl, and just plain ordinary guys. It's a story of a boy and a girl who find out something about war and about themselves. And it's a story of the men who deliver the goods, the United States Merchant Marine. For these are the men who haven't made so many headlines but who, by the end of our first year of war, had a greater percentage of casualties than any other branch of the armed services. And so DuPont is proud to tell a story of America's Merchant Marine, starring Dick Powell as Barry Arthur, ordinary seaman, with Ona Munson as Kathy, star feature writer, in The Sailor Takes a Wife by Alan Sloan on The Cavalcade of America. City room of a newspaper. Rattling, clacking, busy place. News. The pulse of a city. Passing through the brains and fast typing fingers of competent and unrattled people. Coming out in marching words and headlines. Leg men, copy readers, photogs and rewrites. And a city editor taking the master pulse. City desk. Well, this is the city editor. Okay, I'll turn you over to a rewrite man. Hold on. Hey, Buck, pick up this call on three, will you? Okay, Barry, I got it. Oh, Barry, are you pretty tied up? Not for you, Kathy. Why? Well, what did you do with the snapshot of that Corporal Saunders, the one we ran with my story yesterday? Oh, it's around here somewhere. Well, I promised his mother I'd return it, and they haven't got it back in engraving. It's so here. It's you... here. There. Oh, my Barry, you might have had them clean it up a little. She's lucky to get it back at all, the way this paper's run. Oh, by the way, uh, that was a swell yarn on that soldier, sweetheart. Nice. Lots of feelings. Well, that's more than I can say for you sometimes. Now, where did that come from? And don't call me sweetheart. Now, here, look, let's uh, get this straightened out, honey. Buck, watch the desk for a while, will you? Okay, pal. Let's go back into my office, Kathy. I want to talk to you. In your capacity as city editor, Mr. Arthur? No, no, this is me talking, Kathy. Me, Barry, the guy you, uh... Oh, well, skip it for now. Watch the door. Now, Kathy, honey, what's wrong with you? Or, or is it me, or what's bothering you? If you're sick, I can get you a couple of days off, or... I am sick, Barry. Heart sick. A tough little reporter like you? And I'm sick of being a tough little reporter. Oh, Barry, that's all you think of nowadays. Reporters, bylines, headlines, deadlines. Don't you know there are people in the world? Well, Kathy, I... I, I know, honey, I've been awfully busy lately. We both have, Don't but... flatter yourself. I'm not thinking about me. I'm thinking about those kids. What kids? Those servicemen you've had me writing the feature stories about. Those poor, plain, Main Street Johnnies that maybe won't come back. I know, yes. You've been doing a swell job, Kathy. Sure, worming my way into some soldier's family, trying to get a picture out of them for the paper. Wangling the worry and heartbreak out of them, just so you can make a Roman holiday in headlines out of, oh, what those boys go through. Now, wait a minute. Don't you think the public ought to hear about those things? Don't kid me, Barry. You're not thinking about that. You're thinking about news, headlines, circulation. Kathy, that's not fair and it's not true and you know it. A newspaper man in wartime has a responsibility to let people know what those kids in the service are doing. To let people know the sacrifices and the hardships and the horrors they go through. We're doing an important job, Kathy. There's only one job in the world that's more important, and that's the job those kids themselves are doing. All right, if it's so important. Why aren't you doing it? Oh, so that's it. Well? Why am I sitting around here protected by a deferment? Where's my uniform? Is that what you mean? Oh, Barry, I didn't say that. Well, it's what you mean, isn't it? Isn't it? For you, I've got to be a hero. I've got to wrap myself in a flag and do something noble. Oh, Barry, please. It isn't that. It's just that... Oh, well, sometimes I wish you had a little more real feeling for what those boys go through instead of thinking of them as just good copy. And you think a fine way for me to get that feeling would be to go through a little myself, hmm? Okay. Okay. Why don't you come right out and say it? 
Oh, Barry, I don't want you to go rushing off to an induction center just to prove what a big boy you are. Induction center? Me? Hey, listen, Senator. I'd take, take more than your needing to get me to an induction center. You couldn't get me down there in a straitjacket. All right, you men, keep in line. This is an induction center, not a bargain sale. Next. Name? Barry Arthur. You got your card? Right here, Doctor. Mm -hmm. To the editor, eh? Thought you fellows rated deferments. Well, we, we do. Uh, any physical disabilities? Why, uh, no. None that I, I, uh, I know of. What's the matter with that leg? Oh, that? Oh, that's uh, just a trick knee. Football. Uh, let me see it. Mm. Well, that's so good, is it? Well, I, I, can, I can get along in it, Doc. I get along fine. Uh, can you? Here. Uh, mm. uh, now, let's see you walk across the room. Sure. Well, I... Oh, Doc, what did you do to it? I'll just put a little pressure on it. Same thing you do to it about 15 times your first day at basic training. I'm sorry, son. You can't take me? With that leg? <laughs> Not a chance. Okay, Next. you men who didn't make it over this way. Oh, come on. Oh, no, they shouldn't turn me away. I got the right to join up. Oh, come on, Pop. You heard him. You're too old. Well, I wasn't too old to send my son to the army to worry about him, was I? Oh, no. They should take me. They should... Now, skip you... it, Pop. You tried, so call it quit. Yeah, well, maybe I ought to give up hating, too, huh? What do you mean, hating? What my boy's fighting, that's what I hate. Maybe I ought to call that quits, too, huh? No, 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 you shouldn't. But where do you go from here, Pop? Where do I go from here? Back to the desk and sit the war out? Sorry, brother, bad knee. Go home and knit sweaters. You're no good for the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Coast Guard. Yeah, well, I still got my seamen's papers way back anyway. So what? Well, haven't you heard of the civilian Navy? What do you mean, the civilian Navy? Merchant Marine. Well, what about it? Who do they ever fight? Listen, the first year of the war, the Merchant Marine had plenty of casualties. Plenty. Don't you ever read the papers? Yeah, yeah. Now that you've mentioned it, I, I think you've got something there, Pop. Those guys really are heroes at that. Well, I never heard any of them describe themselves that way, but... But they might take in a man who's too old to carry a rifle, huh? Could be. And a young fellow with a bum knee? Could be, son. Could be. And what are we waiting for? Come on. Hiya, Buck. How does it feel to be city editor at last? Oh, hello, Barry. We were just wondering what you were going to do now that... Yeah, now that I've been turned down. You heard, huh? Yep. Well, you can ask Kathy after I leave. After you leave? You heard me. Why, Barry, where's your straitjacket? Oh. Okay, go ahead. Kid me. Kathy? Oh, Kathy, could we go someplace and talk? Well, what's the matter with right here? Oh, Kathy, I just wanted to tell you About that your I... being rejected? We heard about it. Oh, listen, Kathy, I I've signed up with something just the same. I... I did want you to know about it. It took me to the merchant marine. Oh, Barry, you didn't have to do that. Well, I'm, I'm in it. I'm in. All right. How do you want me to head the story? The city editor joins up. Isn't it wonderful? Well, what did you want me to do? I didn't want you to make a grandstand play to impress me or anybody else. Well, I didn't, I didn't do it for that. I did it because, well, I, 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 I felt that... This... Oh, I'm sorry, Barry. Maybe it's partly my fault, too. Maybe you will do some good somewhere. On a ship or something. Kathy, suppose I do some of this good you're talking about. Will you... Will I what? Barry, when are you going to realize that I don't count in this? That's what I keep trying to tell you. A real person doesn't go to war just to be a hero for a girl. A girl doesn't count. You count to me, Kathy. And I, uh, well, I thought maybe I'd get to kiss you goodbye, but... Please, Barry, don't. Oh, all right, all right. Let's drop the whole thing. I'm taking, taking off now. And well, I wish you luck. Oh, and in two, three months, I'll be at sea. A lot can happen out there. It's a good place for a newspaper man. I'll do all right. I do wish you luck, Barry. Oh, you poor, mixed-up guy. Hoffman Island. A two-by-four chunk of man-made land on the rim of New York Harbor, with the Atlantic at its very doorstep. Training station. The beginning of 13 grueling weeks that it takes to make a merchant seaman out of a boot black or a banker or a city editor. And remember this. Every one of you is here by choice. You didn't get picked for this service. You volunteered. Whatever you're in for, remember you asked for it. Okay, section leader, carry on. Okay, form his squads and follow me. What do you know about that, Pop? Oh, you asked no, for it, he said. Well, didn't we? 
Sure. But what? Don't worry. We'll find out. Drill and more drill. Climbing ladders, climbing ropes, toughening up. That's not easy on a man who's 50 years old. It's not easy on a man who's always earned his living behind a desk, like a city editor. There's no time to bellyache. There's too much to learn. Big things and little things. Okay, you guys have had enough time now. Hold up those sheep shank knots. Here you are. How's this, Bolton? Now, let me see. Now, look, fella. The loop wants to run over and through. See? Like this. Not time. Sail making, signal recognition, boat handling, engine takedown, life drill, and practice. For a moment that may come to any merchant seaman. That every merchant seaman dreads the most. When you're on a tanker and she's hit. And all around, the sea is covered with a flaming slick of oil and gasoline. At Hoffman Island, a squad of men are lined up at a diving board above a practice tank. Okay, light her up. Light up that oil slick. Look at her burn. First man, jump. Feet first. Hands over your mouth. Okay, Pop. Here goes nothing. Stay under and swim. Swim. I made it. You're next, Pop. Okay. Keep those hands over your yak. Take a deep breath. Stay under the burning oil and swim, blast you. Swim. Stay under and swim. <laughs> Thirteen weeks of it. Night and day on that little island. And then... I do solemnly swear... I do solemnly solemnly swear... swear That I will abide by the rules and regulations of the service. That I will abide by the rules and regulations of the service. And obey the lawful orders of the persons in authority. And obey the lawful orders of the persons in authority. Pursuant thereto during my enrollment. Pursuant thereto during my enrollment. And I seek enrollment in the service in good faith. Attention, attention. Ordinary seaman B. Arthur. Here. Ordinary seaman J. Burroughs. Coming up. Report to shipping office. Report to shipping office. Rendezvous, somewhere in the Atlantic. It's a long haul across the Atlantic in wartime. A nameless ship out of a nameless port, beating down the coast, heading for your rendezvous, waiting for your convoy. Two days, four days, five days. Where well, we'll be picking up our convoy about daybreak. How can you tell that, Mac? Fingers is the name, sailor. Call me Fingers. Okay, Fingers. How can you tell? <laughs> me? Listen, pal, if you've been doing this as long as I have, you can smell it. Everything that's going to happen, you can smell it. Most of all, trouble. I wish I had been doing this as long as you have. Oh, so you like the racket, huh? Yeah, sure. Uh, how about you, Pop? I like it fine. I got a boy over there on that side somewhere. Yeah? Hey, you're kind of old, ain't you? Yeah, just turned 21. What's it to you? How old am I? You? Oh, we'll say about, uh, 40? Maybe 38, 39? Uh-uh. 28. No. No. Yeah. 28, going on 100. I look old, huh? Well, I... Listen, baby, listen. You get yourself torpedoed three or four times. Raft off ship after ship. Living your life out on these rush bucket state. Uh-oh. Well, I'm off watch. Now get me some jabber. I'll be seeing you. Fingers been sounding off again? Yeah. Kind of jumpy, isn't he? Torpedo tappy. Four times. The last time he lost the fingers in his left hand. Oh. Oh. Hence the moniker. Yeah. But he's got a right to be jumpy this trip. How come? You know, we're carrying, son, gas. About a million gallons of high-octane gas. You are listening to Dick Powell as Barry Arthur, Ordinary Seaman, and Ona Munson as Kathy in The Sailor Takes a Wife on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. 
Our play is the story of the merchant marine and the men in it who man the ships of America's lifeline to the battlefront. As the play continues, we find that Barry Arthur, a newspaper city editor who has joined the maritime service to vindicate himself in the eyes of Kathy, his star reporter, has completed his training. And he and his shipmate have received their first sailing orders and are aboard ship on their first cruise bound for a convoy rendezvous somewhere in the Atlantic. It's a long haul in convoy across the Atlantic. Speed held down to the pace of the slowest freighter. Five days, ten days, fifteen days. The lame, the halt, and the blind. That's what they're giving us. The lame, the halt, and the blind. Ah, cut it out, fingers. Yeah, well, you know as well as I do. What good are guys like him and Pop going to be to us if we get into a jam? Quiet down. Hey, what's going on? Say, what is this? Nothing. What's the matter? Is this a private argument, or can anybody get here? There wasn't no argument. No? Well, I'll tell him. Look at him. Look at him. The lame, the halt, and the blood. Listen. Listen to what? Don't you hear it? Don't you hear it, you dummies? Don't you hear it? I'm going below. What was the matter with him? Nothing. Just scared, that's all. Was he talking about us, me and Barry? Tell you, just torpedo taffy, that's all. A lot of guys get like that when they're sailing through the same waters where they were torpedoed a couple of times before. Yeah, there's more to it than that. It's right what Finger says. Anything that's going to happen, he can smell it. Most of all, trouble. Listen. Now, it's a plane. So that's what was the matter with Fingers. Where is it? There, see? There it is. Plenty high, but it's up there. Well, what's one little plane got to do, get so excited about? Well, listen, son. Have you ever seen a vulture hanging around up in the sky waiting for some, some animal to die? Well... Now, that's what that plane is. He'll just watch us for days. And when we get near enough to those Nazi air bases, he tips them off. Then Bluey... Oh, a vulture. Yeah. Just waiting. Just waiting. What's it like up there? Oh, about the same. Here, give me some more java. Vulture still hanging around? Yeah. Where's fingers? Well, I haven't seen him lately. It's his watch, isn't it? I'm not so sure he's going to be able to keep his watch. What's the matter? He's sick? Yeah, sick in the head. Ever since that plane's been following us. Well, you're blaming him. He just been dumped once too often, that's all. Fingers it ought to take it a little bit easier. Who's yapping about me? Nobody said nothing against you, Fingers. Relax. Relax? You think I'm nervous, huh? You think maybe I'm scared, huh? Uh, you punks. Yeah, how about some coffee, Fingers? You young punks. You're getting all the breaks guys like me had to fight for. Mama's boys. Send them to school. Make semen out of them in three months. Slip them into monkey suits and ship them out. Watch your trap, Fingers. Mama's boys. The new merchant marine. Gonna man the great American fleet of the future, huh? What do you bilge rats know about the merchant service? You wet behind the ears, you. What do you know about what a guy has to take? Did you ever have guys making cracks behind your back because you didn't wear no uniform? Did the shore patrol of a... Push you back on a ship after 40 days at sea when you were just dying to put your feet on dirt again? Did you ever catch a tinfish up, my man? No, 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 you didn't. No. Don't carry on like that, Fingers. Get away from you me, you old... Let... Don't hurt him, boy. I hate to do this, Let's girl, but... Oh, you... Should... Oh, I'm sorry, but somebody had to hit him. You did the right thing. That's that plane up there. Follow us. Just waiting and watching that's what was the matter with him. Help me get him back in his bunk. I'll, I'll take his watch. Here. Of course. Come on. Listen. The plane. Yeah. Sounds like he's coming down to have a good look. Yeah. It won't be long now. Hi, right, Barry. Where are you heading? It's my trick of the wheel. Going up to relieve fingers. Well, how is he today? Oh, he's been okay since that plane stopped tagging us. Want to come up to the bridge with me for a minute? Maybe a... Yeah, you know... it might make him feel better if we both kind of... Come on. Hi, Fingers. Huh? Oh, hi, Barry. Pop. Fingers? Hey, uh, what's your course? Zero four zero. Zero four zero it is. Okay, Fingers, I'll take over. Say, Barry, I... about my blowing my top last night, I... Oh, forget it. No, I, I shouldn't have gone overboard. I'm sorry. You kids are swell. Yeah, and Pop, too. 
skip it, Fingers. We've all been kind of jumpy. Say, our pal up there seems to have left us. Yeah, it's not so good. Hey, maybe I spoke too soon. Hey, that's not that same plane. Hear the difference? Look, I can see them. Where? Up there. Fingers. Well, they're dive bombers. Tell them to sound the alarm. Right. Look, Barry, two of them are dropping down on us. Oh, we're going to get it all right. All's the course, zero one zero, evasive action. Aye, aye, sir. Man your battle stations. Man your battle stations. Well, here we go again. Yeah. It's a funny thing, though. It's not so bad once they really come after you. It's the waiting that's murder. Yeah. yeah. Here comes the first one. Hit the deck. <laughs> Well, it's us they're after, all right. Yeah, them hindies can spot a tank at 100 miles away. Here comes another one. Look out! Duck down, fingers down. Ah, hit! Hit the man! Come on, Pop. No time to get to the boat. Hey, where's Fingers? Fingers. Fingers. Oh, there he is. He's hurt. Fingers. Fingers, you all right? Oh, no. Uh, come on, Fingers. Come on, we got to jump. Give me a hand with him. Come Leave on. me alone. Leave me alone. Stay here. Don't be a sap. You guys will never make it through that burning gas with me. Go ahead, jump. Leave me alone, will you? Go on. Go We're ahead, you're taking you. Here we go. Well, what do you know about... Hey, Kathy. Well, what's up, Buck? Anything hot? Yeah, I got a little job for you. Serviceman interview. Oh, please, Buck, I can't. Not so... Uh, maybe you like this one. Here, read the story. Just came over the ticker. Hmm? Mediterranean convoy. The tanker went down in less than five minutes. The lone survivor reached port today and is recovering in the Navy hospital, making headlines for the second time in his career as a merchant seaman. The first was when he joined the Merchant Marine four months ago. The former city editor, Barry Arthur... <gasps> Buck! Is he... Sure, he's all right. Read it. He, he's burned some, but he's all right. Oh, Buck... I want you to go down and get his story. Oh, but no, I couldn't. Not after... What's the matter? You wanted a hero, didn't you? Oh, no, not like... Not like this. Listen, Kathy. You go down and get that story. And that's an order. Nurse. That you? No. I'm... Well, who... Uh, who is it? It's me, Barry. Kathy. Kathy? Oh, you're still covering the hero beat? Oh, Barry, please. For a while we thought you were... Well, we heard about the ship three weeks ago, and we thought you were... Oh, take it easy, baby. I'm all right. No kidding. There. Now, take it easy. Oh, Barry, I'm so ashamed of myself. I've been such a fool. No, you haven't, Kathy. Oh, but I have. Do you know what Buck said when we heard about the ship? He said... There goes a swell city editor. And suddenly I realized that I'd sent a great guy who was doing a swell job out to... Look, uh, baby, uh, maybe we were both mixed up a little bit. I, You were awful right about some things. I did do it for a grandstand play. I was showing off to you, but I won't do it again. Then, then you're not going back. I am going back. But for another reason this time... Because there's fighting going on, and there's all those guys over there that need the stuff, and because there was a guy named Pop who went to sea because he had a kid in Italy, and for a guy named Fingers who went back again and again, even when he was half crazy from the strain, and for oh, a lot of guys who would never make the headlines. Oh, Barry, I'm so proud. And Kathy, when I get back, your first assignment will be to marry me. Thank you, Orna Munson and Dick Powell. To the men of the Merchant Marine who carry the materials of war across the seven seas to our battlefronts everywhere, DuPont sends its good wishes and deep appreciation. Mr. Powell will return in a few moments. Gain Whitman, speaking for DuPont, will tell you of two chemical developments that have resulted in a new shortcut to air power. Even metal airplanes have quite a few parts covered with fabric. For instance, the control surfaces of nearly all planes, including the great flying fortresses, the rudders, ailerons, and so on, are fabric-covered. The fabric is treated with a finish known to aircraft engineers as dope, a liquid that draws it taut and smooth. Under the usual way of making these parts, the fabric is laboriously stretched over the framework by hand and coated and recoated with liquid dope at least half a dozen times. Because of the nap on the fabric, 
the first few coats of liquid have to be put on with a brush. And that takes time. Still more time is lost waiting for the dope to dry. And not only time, but space as well. Because the parts have to stand somewhere while they're drying. And wherever you put them, they take up room. Sanding the parts smooth between coats of dope demands still more time. But DuPont has now developed a pre-doped fabric. A fabric to which the first coat of dope is applied before it is sent to the aircraft plant. Using this DuPont fabric, time-consuming brush coats are done away with because DuPont pre-doping flattens down the troublesome nap on the cloth and assures a smooth surface. Later coats can be applied with a spray gun. The final finish is much smoother with less sanding. At the very least, a half hour is saved on every part, every rudder, or whatever it may be. And the saving in space is so important that the process and materials engineer of one aircraft plant calls this new pre-doped fabric a prime example of space saving. On top of the saving in time and space, further streamlining of plane production is made possible by a new high-solvency lacquer, also developed by DuPont. After months of research, this new lacquer is now ready for the aircraft industry. It will still further reduce the number of operations required to paint airplane fabric with an additional saving in time of 20 or 30 percent. The two developments used together, the pre-doped fabric and the new lacquer, mean savings not only in the manufacture of combat planes, but also in the manufacture of training planes and gliders, many of which are entirely covered with fabric. Both developments represent wartime achievements of peacetime, DuPont, better things for better living through chemistry. And here is Dick Powell, star of this evening's cavalcade. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the cast, Miss Munson and myself, we hope you liked our play tonight. Me, I learned something from it because I think that Barry Arthur's early lack of realization about the vital and dangerous job being done by the men of the Merchant Marine is perhaps shared by many of us. And so Miss Munson and I hope that through the parts we played for you tonight, we may have helped in some small way to do honor to those brave men who have done so much and are doing so much for all of us. Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade joins the nation in celebrating Abraham Lincoln's birthday as we present Raymond Massey in a radio adaptation of E.P. Conkle's famous play, Prologue to Glory. The play reveals with wit and emotion the young Lincoln as he started up the road to glory. Lincoln is a very young man when he first left his backwoods home and set up storekeeping in New Salem, Illinois. Next Monday's broadcast will mark the third year that Raymond Massey has starred in his now famous role of Lincoln on the Cavalcade of America. Cavalcade is pleased to remind this audience that Dick Powell appeared tonight through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, whose current release is The Miracle of Morgan's Creek. The musical score this evening was composed by Robert Armbruster. This is James Bannon sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, who invites you to join Cavalcade's audience again next week when Raymond Massey will be starred as Abraham Lincoln in a story filled with rich humor and romance that is also a stirring portrait of Lincoln's early years on the frontier of a new nation. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.